Hey, hi all. Uh, in this session, we are going to discuss about the introduction of .NET, and uh, we'll see like uh, uh, you know what is this .NET and .NET framework, and uh, why we use a .NET framework, and uh, what are all the components of uh, this .NET architecture is having. So you mean like you know we'll see what is uh, .NET. Why we use dot net and components of dot net. So before to that, uh, so I just wanted to introduce myself. My uh, myself is Ramna Reddy and I'm working as an architect. So I'm having eighteen years experience in dot net technologies, uh, more or less. You know, since um, the dot net was born. So. And also having the experience on Amazon Web Services and Azure Cloud Platforms and uh, SQL Server, Go Language, Python, and Angular. So I'm your instructor for this .NET course. And uh, in this course, uh, we are going to cover different uh, topics here. Like, you know, uh, C sharp dot net, ASP dot net, MVC, ASP dot net, MVC core, and ASP dot net web forms, SQL server, and uh, some of the UI technologies like HTML, CSS, jQuery, JavaScript, and Angular JS and React. A little bit introduction to create uh, UI. So these are the uh, courses we are going to cover as part of this dot net course content. So let's get into the uh, agenda here uh, for today's topic is uh, .NET introduction. So, so what is .NET actually? So .NET is a, a platform and uh, open source framework to create different applications across different platforms. So .NET is a platform is nothing but it is a base providing for coders or developers to create any type of applications like Windows, web, mobile applications, microservices or gaming applications, IoT applications, etc. So if you want to, uh, you know, map me this uh, platform, .NET platform to a real-time uh, scenario. Like if you want to construct a house, right? You need to do some, uh, you know, uh, exercises or you need to do some uh, uh, kind of uh, groundworks before you start house construction. Like, you know, uh, digging of uh, earth or soil uh, till you uh, get the uh, you know, a strong soil, and there you uh, put some basement, and then on top of that, you will have some plinth beam columns, and then putting some pillars, and after that, you test the soil, and then you create a basement for uh, you know, uh, other activities, correct? And uh, right, uh, you need to make sure that you know. Uh, Pillars and uh, you no know, basement is strong enough to put house on top of that. If you if you want to you know construct multiple floors on top of it, so this is something a basement or kind of a base you need to have to start house construction. Correct. Similarly, if you want to create any application, like whether it is Windows based or internet based application or mobile based application. You need to have, or you need to require, right? Or you require a platform or a base where you jump into that and start creating an application, correct? So when it comes to a real time, I think everything require a manual intervention, wherein even I think Revit is no need of manual intervention. So things are readily available just uh, uh, pull it 
and can you know uh, integrate and you then start constructing house as like you know uh, things are happening to construct flyovers or you know um, metro uh, railway you know kind of uh, uh, flyovers that are constructing um, bigger uh, you know buildings the only thing is you need to uh, learn about like how to integrate and how to pull out what required component what is the required component to be uh, place it so on so place so these are all things you need to know before you pull out the component or object from the source correct similarly when it comes to dotnet dotnet is coming up with all readily available components or readily available objects and only thing as a coder is you need to understand how to use the component or a library or a tool start interacting right and integrating to fulfill your application development so if you want to know all these things first you need to understand the language what language it is required to understand how to pull out the components from dotnet platform and how to integrate to start coding and then creating an application so for this dotnet has provided different programming languages right and c sharp dotnet vb.net f sharp.net these three are uh, now uh, main languages inside of microsoft so either of one language is enough to learn so if you are aware of any language of these three languages it is very easy to interact to the dotnet platform to get the required component or to get start interacting to uh, you know given tools and libraries and then start writing of code because again uh, it's kind of a uh, 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 depth you are learning the language because um, if you're just learning what is c sharp and uh, what is data type and how to simple write a printing of messages that's not enough to you know uh, start creating an application you must know like uh, the in depth knowledge of language like you know um data types and oops concepts and uh, you know um some of the other advanced concepts like link queue or lambda expressions or collections or sql server concepts if you know all these things it is very easy for you to start you now talking to the system with c sharp correct so once after learning language you need to write a little bit understand what technology you require to create website so for that we have a asp.net and asp.net mvc and asp.net mvc code like that you just need to uh, get some insight insights or some details about the technology this is asp.net is not a language it's a technology web technology which is using it for creating websites or web applications right so once you get that knowledge then you use your language that is c sharp and talk to the technology and get your components right and start coding so what i am trying to say is a dotnet is a platform or a base which provides facilitates to create different applications it is a revolutionary platform using it for creating different applications it is a open source everybody can directly download it from internet and you just install it in your system it is not going to take much time it's a seconds of uh, time it will take and you just install it and you just go to the uh, studio which is studio and start writing your program so as part of this dotnet we have different uh, versions here the initial version of dotnet was released and named as dotnet framework in 2002 that is 1.0 version and that that's the initial version released by microsoft to uh, you know interact to the coders or uh, developers to start creating applications so and in dotnet framework 1.0 right 
So they have been given some features initially, like you know, oops concept they have been given and uh, different applications also you can create using uh, .NET framework like Windows, console, web, right, etc. And web services they have given and some of the uh, C sharp concepts they have mentioned it, but I'm going on this .NET framework. So as the industry is evolving or technologies are introducing different, different new features, the dot Microsoft also uh, you know, started releasing different versions on .NET framework every year or thrice or every every year or every uh, once in it, uh, once in a year or, you know, like uh, every three years or Every one and a half year, they started releasing versions of .NET. So like that, they have been uh, evolving and releasing different, different versions. And the latest version of a .NET framework is 4.8.1, which is almost uh, having all the features to create any application that what industry is supporting or expecting uh, like you know creating different applications including iot and uh, uh, ml.net applications so the implications with this dotnet framework is it basically works on dotnet framework on windows operating system that means it won't support cross platform and also it won't uh, have uh, features of, uh, you know, cloud architecture wherein if you want to integrate or deploy your application onto cloud, .NET Framework is not having much with supporting libraries. So because of these implications, Microsoft has started developing other software called .NET Core. This has started parallelly uh, you know, by taking a runtime of .NET Framework, and they name, they name it as .NET Core, right? They started in 2016, and finally they released .NET Core 1.0 in 2019, which is basically fulfill, fulfill these implications, like working on non-Windows operating systems and uh, supporting different programming languages and supporting cloud architecture and improved performance because as a customer, as a coder, primarily looking at the performance, that is the main aspect, main point, people are thinking on it. And .NET Framework is uh, much more ahead or optimized to fulfill your requirement here. So this .NET Framework was stopped in 4.8.1, releasing next versions because they are coming up with this .NET Core. So this .NET Core again evolving with the different versions, like since 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and then they directly released 5.0, which is uh, named as .NET because people are getting confused with the core and framework, hence they just released .NET. So now the latest version of .NET is 8, which is uh, released last year. And uh, you know that using this .NET, you can create different applications as like how the .NET framework provides the platform for creating applications. But the only thing is this .NET core is more optimized, cloud optimized, and using cloud architecture to integrate .NET core projects on .NET uh, no, Azure platform directly. And you can create different uh, services like Azure functions or, you know, uh, cognitive services or dockerization or, you know, uh, Azure container registration. So a lot of things it is uh, directly integrating onto a .NET, sorry, Azure cloud. And also it has high performance because they have, um, you know, uh, scrutinize and, you know, uh, remove unnecessary objects on casting conversions, which we have in .NET Framework Lexi code. And now they come up with, uh, you know, newly improved components inside of execution.NET runtime. 
so it is more performant and having uh, you know cloud integration uh, process as well so it has uh, uh, you know supporting features like running on different operating system mac os linux or unix and uh, you know ios and android and it has uh, kind of you know uh, other features as like we have in dotnet framework but only thing is it resolves the problems what we have in dotnet framework is class platform and you know cloud integrations correct so with that i think uh, that's what uh, we basically talking about dotnet so then coming to this why we use dotnet right so as developers right are always thinking that uh, they require a software which is more user friendly correct so this dotnet or dotnet framework having that guts like you know um, having the rich set of components and performance for developing applications in class platform hence developers like to use dotnet because it is very easy for using because it has many tools and libraries readily available only thing is you need to pull out and plug in and start developing right developers can write code faster collaborate collectively and test and fix their code efficiently right the ability to reuse code between different components implement or different implementations which automatically reduces the cost of development and which will benefit the company so hence people are using the dotnet and coming to the components of dotnet so there are different components i can segregate here like one thing is uh, languages as i'm telling you languages and another thing is application model frameworks. And next one is .NET runtime. So languages means, as I mentioned, it is supporting C Sharp .NET, Baby .NET, and F Sharp. So all these are having different syntaxes, but to integrate, uh, so in between these languages, we have a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some frameworks inside of it, some uh, libraries like, you know, some features like CLS or CDS, right? Uh, BCL or FCL components. That means if you can integrate, uh, if you want to integrate C Sharp into VB.NET, you can integrate or VB.NET into F Sharp, you can integrate because it supports common type system, com common language specifications. So when it comes to application model framework, we have different uh, frameworks available in uh, dotnet uh, to create different applications basically windows based or web based or mobile based or other applications like ml.net you can develop for machine learning into your dotnet applications to right or dotnet lot libraries also available to develop applications based on sensors right and and uh, smart devices okay so and when it comes to runtime, so again, it is something like, you know, uh, as, it, as I said, it is also called as a common language runtime, compiles and executes certain program on different operating systems. So we have a just-in-time compiler where it converts your code into, you know, executable code or the machine understanding code, right? Because uh, every language, in the dotnet is converting to msl microsoft intermediate language with the help of clr once you get msl or common intermediate language it conforms to clr to use jit compiler to execute this and convert into right execution code so dotnet runtime manages the execution of cl cl is a cross platform compiler and any operating system can process it cross platform compatible refers to an application's ability to run on multiple different operating systems with minimal modifications. For example, an application C Sharp can run on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS without any modifications. Such as such applications is called cross-platform applications. Okay, so I will talk about more on this .NET runtime, like you know what actually the CLR is doing and how many type of compilers we have in it, what uh, each compiler is doing it. 
as part of compiling your source code. Okay, so these are the some of the components of .NET, and uh, we'll see the features of .NET in coming sessions. Like, let, there are so many features in .NET, like as I said, CLR, CDS, CLS, CIL, CLI, and virtual execution system VE and metadata and garbage collector exception handling, right? So there are so many features we have in .NET. Only thing is you need to just use that library and start writing of code. So to give a reference or to get any feature, if you want to implement .NET and you are not able to find the library, you just install to NuGet repository, wherein it will automatically install the reference into your system and you just start using of the required, you know, function. So that's what it's all about this .NET introduction. So let me know if you have any questions on this introduction part, because uh, this is something we need to understand before we get into the actual topic of the .NET components. And uh, like we'll start off C sharp, basically, like uh, you know the concepts of like C sharp uh, language, and then data types and OOPs concept, and as I mentioned, like link you and lambda expressions collections, right? Uh, more on you know SQL Server integrations, entity frameworks, etc. So this is all about today's session, and we'll continue uh, the session tomorrow. And uh, thanks for joining. Thank you.